So one of the first examples that we're going to be doing here is taking an email address that we know is associated to malicious activity, and we're going to be searching for that within community.riskiq.com to figure out what else we can identify here. So if you had a, a laptop that, that um, was infected and you associate it with an IP, with a uh, email address, and now you want to investigate it to see what's the scope of this is and yeah. find out what's happening. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to punch that email address into our discover search and we hit enter. And what we come up with is two unique domains. It looks like wada-arna.org and then taz-cas.org. Now at the surface, all I know is this. this. These two domains have been registered with the same email address. So we're leveraging our Whois data set here to make this association. We can see that they were registered in 2016 and that they expired or they will expire in 2018. So they're still valid as of today. Now, my next steps as an analyst would be to investigate each one of these independently. What else is there? So if we, if we right click and you open it another tab, um, we'll see the results. And so we can see here right away from a visual perspective, there's actually no information. So it doesn't appear that this uh, domain has been resolving the past six months. But there is some hosting history here that uh, shows us that we have some passive DNS information. Naturally, we know that we could go and explore more of the who is details, uh, keeping in mind that the email address is just one connection point. We may want to go and explore that phone number as well. If we go back to the resolutions, I want to mention one thing. If you take a look at the IP address, we marked it as suspicious, not malicious, because the IP address can change over time. Yeah, that's correct. The domain could be marked as, as malicious because that's not going to change, but the back uh, IP address can always be changing. So at this particular time, it was malicious. Yeah. So looking at the subdomains, is there anything else that we might be able to glean here? You know, as an analyst, like I now know that there's a number of different unique subdomains associated with this infrastructure which to me tells me I have a number of different avenues that I could go explore. You know, I might have some more resolution information, some more passive DNS that wasn't available to me on the, the primary domain that I'm looking at today. But where I really want to focus is that open source intelligence tab, so that OSINT tab here. And you can see the first entry appears to reference our query or something that looks very similar. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's not our query. It is something a little bit different. It's WADA-AMA instead of ARNA. And you can see here that something clever has taken place. It looks like this domain that we're investigating appears to be a typo squat. And in fact, if we go and actually click on this first entry, we're taken to a legitimate web page for the World Doping Agency. Now, I'm not uh, an expert on, or the World Anti-Doping Agency. Now, I'm not an expert on, on the infrastructure we're looking at here, but it seems to me that someone was creating a typo squad infrastructure to make themselves appear like the World Anti-Doping Agency. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look and think back to the timeframes, you know, it was 2016 when we first saw this registered. There was some scandals going on with Russia at the time. Right. Now, what's also interesting here, too, is that all located directly below that legitimate wada-ama.org link is a, a piece of open source intelligence associated with the security company Threat Connect. Um, and here they blog about Fancy Bear, a Russian cyber uh, operation on steroids is what they call it. Mm -hmm. And and here's, here's the uh, domain. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, we have another uh, domain that we did not make uh, through the connection. So we have this wada-awa.org um, that was not connected through the email address that we originally started with. So this is a great example of a case where we had an email address. We didn't know anything about it. We walk away with two pieces of unique infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Looking at one of them, it appears to be a typo squad of a legitimate website. And then we instantly find this piece of open source intelligence that helps us build a narrative. Not only do we have time frames that will line up to the Russian uh, doping scandals, mm -hmm. but we also have a theme being portrayed in the typo squad and domain, and we only have a complete narrative that we can go and explore further. And, and an additional um, um, domain to look at. Yeah. So there's probably a number of other indicators that we could explore there. The other one are the tags that are associated at the top that um, the system has put in espionage, fancy bear, and Russia yeah. associated with this as well. So just by writing the query and seeing it, we can look at the tags as well. Yeah, and those tags, uh, that's a great point in highlighting those. 
Those tags are a little bit different in that they're global tags. Mm -hmm. And so these are available to anyone inside of the system and they're derived from the projects that we have. And so if open source intelligence was a poor lead for us, what we could do is actually explore the public projects that are available mm -hmm. uh, and see that there is a Russian espionage fancy bear project from the passive total team. Uh, so that would be another source of uh, exploration if we wanted to go further. Just to kind of round out uh, both of the pieces of inf inf infrastructure we were looking at, in this particular case, this TAS-CAS.org still appears like an anomaly to us. But again, going with the, the notion that we've discovered the rushing doping agency, uh, r rushing, Russia anti-doping anti -doping typo squad, the narrative provided by Threat Connect and the security team, we're able to identify that this is actually a typo squad of the tribunal uh, arbitration of court for sport. So again, fitting with the theme here, and we can quickly see how just going with one indicator, we can identify a whole bunch of signals that, that we can now leverage at our disposal and very quickly tell a story about the infrastructure we're looking at.